now call to order the uh, regular town board meeting March 19th, 2019 for the town of Aronaquite. Visitors are invited to join board members in rising to recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call. <coughs> Councilwoman Hush Ray. Here. Councilman Pertico. Here. Councilwoman Romeo. Here. Councilman Weiner. Here. Supervisor Seely. Here. Attorney for the town. Here. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Clerk, and good evening, everyone. Uh, on our agenda tonight, uh, we have a, a modest uh, uh, table of uh, resolutions. Um, we also have two public hearings that were kept open from last month, which will begin at 737 and 738 as posted. We'll try to get through as much of our agenda before that, and then we'll refer to that um, uh, uh, those two public hearings. We also have a uh, special presentation before our um, board agenda. First, I just wanted to uh, get through a few announcements. Um, last uh, month, February, and I think a little bit of March, is always a fun time here at Town Hall as we uh, play host to uh, the third graders from West Arondequite uh, School District, all 12 third grade classes. Uh, we bring them here in the Broderick Room. We bring them to the library. We lock them up in the jail for a little bit. They will visit our police department. Um, but it always is a good time. And as someone who uh, um, always stresses the importance of civic education, it's uh, really great to see kids at that age who are just really being exposed to uh, government and a sense of community. And uh, they couldn't have been uh, better guests. Uh, I was a little nervous at the beginning of this meeting because when they're in here, we, do a, we simulate a town board meeting. And our first item for board action is always to swear in the uh, little honorary council members, so I'm glad I uh, did not divert from the actual uh, script uh, and got it right tonight. But I want to thank all of the classes and all the teachers and the many parents and grandparents who volunteered their time. They are welcome anytime. Uh, in the same light, uh, last week I uh, went over and visited with the fifth graders at the Rand Eastman School. Um, that's always a fun time. It allows me to talk a little bit about how uh, town government relates to the uh, state and federal government, which the kids are learning about. And uh, I always like it because it's a lot of uh, question and answer and really some tough questions. And uh, the fifth graders were very well behaved. I was the last thing standing in way uh, between them and dismissal. And uh, I was very happy to uh, be their guest. Uh, last week, I had the uh, pleasure of uh, joining uh, Paul Croner, a volunteer with the Meals on Wheels program. Uh, as he made his um, rounds of deliveries uh, throughout Aronaquite. Paul's a uh, hardworking Meals on Wheels volunteer. It's a terrific program. Um, this is the second year I've done it with Paul. Uh, it helps bring attention to the, uh, to the program, which provides hot meals for residents. Uh, if people are interested in, in, in being the recipient of the meal program, you can call 787-8397. Um, the program is always in need of volunteers like Paul, so if you're interested in volunteering, uh, you can call 274-4385, and thank you to Paul and all the volunteers. Uh, a few weeks ago, earlier this month, I joined Chief Tantillo and members of the Aranaquai Police Department at the annual Monroe County uh, Stop DWI Program Annual Luncheon. Uh, I want to congratulate Officers uh, Gramlich, Bruckel, and Pronte for being recognized uh, for their efforts to keep drunk and impaired drivers off our roadways and to hold those who break the law accountable. Um, over the weekend, uh, Chief Tantillo, uh, Lieutenant Laird, Lieutenant Reed, and Sergeant Gordon uh, conducted a very special badge pinning ceremony of the Aronaquai Police Department's newly hired police officers. All four officers uh, are in post-academy training phase of their uh, police training and will be starting their field training at the end of the month. And we look forward to having them uh, on the road with our officers and ultimately on road patrol uh, on duty. Uh, please uh, join us in congratulating Officers Barrett, uh, Demanicor, Ficara, and Jelfo, and uh, please wish, wish them the best of luck as they complete their FTO process. Uh, last year, some, here's some good news. Last, well, that was good news, but here's some more good news. Uh, last year, the town board authorized an audit of our street lighting billings by RG&E, uh, as is permitted by state law. I'm happy to say we re recently received a refund check from RG&E in the amount of $182,000. Uh, which was the re result of uncovering uh, five years of overbillings of our street lights and lighting at town facilities. 
Uh, the audit was conducted by Troy and Banks, which was able to verify annual savings moving forward of approximately $17,000. So that's very good news uh, from our, for our operating bottom line as well. Um, additionally, more good news, uh, Monroe County Clerk Adam Bello announced last week that his offices have discovered an overpayment of mortgage recording taxes to the City of Rochester that will result in approximately $1 million in revenue being redirected or returned appropriately towards the suburbs. Um, for Ronacoit, uh, this equates to approximately $74,000, so we certainly thank Con County Clerk Bello for his work to ensure accountability in the processing of this revenue. I just want to make a point because f some residents have asked me, you know, we get this notion of refund, and uh, people rightfully so think, ask, well, are we going to get our money back? It's the taxpayer's money. Uh, the short answer is uh, yes and no. Um, First of all, the town really can't issue a direct refund check to its residents without state legislation. I believe the town of Henrietta did that several years ago, but that was, I think, north of 8 or $9 million worth of refunds. Um, given it would amount per capita to about $4, million, $4 per resident, uh, it's unlikely the state law would be justifiable. Uh, the general rule is, however, that you don't want to really use one-shot non-recurring revenue like this for operating expenses. Uh, because such revenue uh, won't be there the following year. It would leave a hole in your budget. So when we normally get these one-shot revenues, we look to allocate them towards uh, concrete things such as capital expenses, equipment. So we'll put it into our uh, general fund balance and look for an appropriate uh, way to uh, invest that into the town, something that will uh, last uh, over the course of multiple budget years. Um, so th the answer is yes and no, but certainly we're, we're gr glad to have the revenue and we'll certainly put it to good use. Um, an update on our DPW, uh, for those of you who have been uh, driving by 590 and 104, um, I always like going over there just to see the progress, which now it seems like we've hit a, a tipping point and things are really moving quickly, uh, especially in the administrative, administration building, which is on the north side of the uh, uh, campus, the new campus. Um, a lot of uh, uh, skilled trades works going on there, and it seems like every time you blink, they've made even more progress. So uh, good job to Commissioner Kiley and our team constructing that. Uh, a reminder, uh, our third annual Senior Health Exposition will be held on April 17th from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. That is pending approval by an upcoming board resolution. I encourage all the board members to vote yes. Uh, we have a new location this year, the, the uh, Bishop County High School Cafeteria, located on Kings Highway North. Parking is available in the rear. There is handicap accessible parking. Uh, we'll have more vendors on hand than ever before. Uh, plenty of free things to take home with you, as well as glucose and blood pressure screening. No pre-registration is required. Please call 585-336-6034 for more information. Uh, I'll make a note the town hall will be closed on Friday, April 19th, an observation of Good Friday. And finally, as we uh, always do every month, the week before our board meeting, um, we uh, would like to congratulate Aaron McGee of our Department of Public Works for being awarded our Staff Spotlight Award. Aaron is a uh, uh, relatively newer member of our team, but has really taken lead on a number of important uh, tasks within the department, uh, mainly as it relates to stormwater. Uh, and, uh, and she was just very much involved with an audit that occurred for our stormwater uh, program. And um, she also was very integral in the uh, solar panel installation above the uh, public safety building. So congratulations to Aaron. And with that, I will now ask uh, our town board members to join me up on the... Uh, up on the podium for a special presentation. So while the board members uh, join me up here, uh, I'd like to begin to bring back something that my predecessor started uh, early in his tenure, uh, Supervisor Bellow, something known as the Good Neighbor Award, which uh, we haven't done in a few years. We certainly have recognized uh, citizens for their uh, achievements, but um, partially an inspiration of uh, Chief Tantillo, who does a very good job recognizing uh, civilian contributions to the, uh, the community. Um, I think that we should always go out of our way to recognize uh, our citizens um, when they do things that contribute to the uh, good of this community, both on a large scale and a small scale. And uh, wanting to kickstart that, I couldn't do it with a, a better recipient uh, than someone who um, actually uh, didn't just help her community, she actually assisted us at Town Hall uh, with something that will be used for generations uh, to come. 
Uh, I would like to ask Jessica Lamb to come up and join me at the podium. So uh, Jessica Lamb is now a rock star in our community. Um, when she came, uh, I believe two, a couple weeks ago to uh, sign what would ultimately be a transfer of uh, the, the documentation uh, to legally transfer the property she owns to the town of Irondequoit, I sent out what it seemed like a relatively uh, good-hearted but benign uh, Facebook post, and it really, uh, my Facebook posts don't really go viral often, only if they're about a better subject matter, and um, I think the community really took heart uh, and uh, was really uh, endeared and, and encouraged and uplifted by uh, Jessica's generosity. Um, I, I won't go into, I think, the underlying, um, you know, the whole story. What I can say is that Jessica's a, a almost lifetime resident of Aranaquite. She's a graduate of West Aranaquite. Uh, she, uh, for a number of reasons, uh, decided to move from her house uh, on Wall Road. Um, uh, you know, it, it's been documented in the media, but she had a, something an incident that was uh, certainly some adversity in her life, a terrible incident. Um, and I think how Jessica responded to that really is a testament to her character. In, in making the decision to move, um, and I'll let Jessica speak if she wants to this, but uh, Jessica wanted to turn a bad situation and make some good out of it. So she decided uh, to offer to the town a parcel of adjacent land next to the, her, proper, her home that she was selling on Wall Road. And uh, only with one strong uh, caveat that the town used it to construct uh, a pocket park or playground. And um, I will say, we uh, are always looking, it's, a, it's actually a strategic goal of ours, identified in our community development block grant program, to look for vacant or zombie parcels or abandoned parcels and transform them into parks or playgrounds. And this happened to be one neighborhood where within the a certain radius, there was no playground for the neighborhood, um, and it was a focus area of ours, one that we strictly identified. So um, it couldn't have come, been more welcome, and certainly we would ex have accepted it anywhere, but um, we immediately uh, uh, took Jessica up on her offer. In December, we approved the uh, transfer of the, or the acceptance of the gift, and I, it is a gift from Jessica to the people of Irondequoit. Her other caveat was it had to be named after Sadie, a, uh, a rescue dog that she had saved that was near and dear to her heart, which I guess uh, was a, an avid hunter on the property. So, um, But um, we gladly uh, um, accepted, and uh, because of her generosity and her willingness and desire to turn a perhaps negative situation or negative uh, memory into something that will have positive memories for year to come, years to come, uh, because of Jessica, the children perhaps the adults too of that neighborhood will get to enjoy a, a pocket playground um, for years, uh, decades, perhaps generations to come. So I can't think of a better uh, way to kickstart this Good Neighbor Award by awarding it to a, a terrific Aronicoit resident, Miss Jessica Lamb. Please give her a round of applause. Um, I wasn't planning on saying anything. Um, it did start as a terrible incident in my home, but this really was kind of, it started off as I just wanted to be rid of the property, to be honest. Um, I wasn't using it, and my realtor suggested that I donate it to the town, and when I contacted them, they were very excited and, and gracious. Um, I didn't expect it to turn into what it has, certainly not because of a Facebook post. Um, and it's just really turned into something a lot larger than I ever expected. And I think it goes to show that you might think something's really small, but it can mean a lot to a, a lot of other people. And we should just try to do the best we can because you don't know how you're affecting other people. So that's it.
And I'll note, uh, as we tr try to continue the Good Neighbor Award, if you would like to nominate someone, you can either do so by calling my office at 336-6034 or emailing supervisor at aronicoit.org. There are plenty of uh, Jessica Lambs out there, and we uh, strive to recognize their good deeds uh, to the greatest extent possible. With that, uh, we will now move on to public input. Um, there was not anyone signed up that I saw. However, if anyone in the audience wishes to address the board on any topic, um, you may do so at this time. We ask that you come up, say your name and address. With that, we will move on to the financial report. Madam Comptroller, we have two financial reports tonight, I believe. That's correct. Thank you, Supervisor. The first report I will present with with the first report, I will present the preliminary 2018 year-end financial results for the town as of February 28th, <coughs> 2019. The 2018 books were open through the end of February to allow for receipt and processing of outstanding commitments and to account for and properly record all 2018 revenue owed to the town. However, the books are now closed. The 2018 preliminary results will not be presented again in this forum. At the June town board meeting, the town's auditors, the Bonadio Group, will present highlights of the audited 2018 financial statements and audit report. The preliminary 2018 year-end financial results as of February 28, 2019, the town's total expenses are lower than budget at 98.5%, a sum of $34,115,000. The amount includes $316,000 of encumbrances. The general fund expenses are below budget at 98.2%, $20,366,000. Actual expenses are $20,186,000, 97.3% of budget. The other 0.9% is due to $180,000 of encumbrances. Overall, the expenses in the highway funds are below budget at 96%, $5,359,000. The cost in these funds result from considerable total expenses for salt, gas, and fuel as projected. The library expenses total $2,326,000, 100.7% of budget. Expenses in the sewer fund of $3,971,000 are below budget at 96.8%. Stormwater drainage is also below budget, 94.9%, a total of $748,000. The general fund has received revenue of $23,436,000. That is 115% of budget. The real estate taxes totaled $10.8 million as budgeted. Payment in lieu of tax revenue equated to $172,000, 102.6% of budget. The other major revenue recorded or accrued by the town include sales tax in the amount of $4,805,000, 111% of budget. Per capita state aid, $613,000, 100% of budget. 103.8% or $781,000 of franchise cable TV revenue and mortgage tax of $874,000, 108.7% of budget. The theme, uh, as you will note in the revenue, we are, in most cases, we're at 100% or greater of budget. In the expenses category, we were below 100%. That's good both in both, uh, both sides of the, ex of the uh, coin. The 2018 Recreation program fees of $323,000 equals 99.4% of budget. Included in other sources of revenue are three significant 2018 one-time revenue items. 
$1.7 million of fire insurance recovery for extra expenses incurred by the town as a result of the DPW garage fire. Metley Center settlement proceeds of $450,000 and $238,000 of settlement costs associated with Comita and the Target and Holiday Inn properties. Without the one-time revenues, the general fund would be at 103.5% of budget. Regarding the entire town, $37.4 million, or 109.8% of revenue and appropriated fund balance, is documented to date. Without the aforementioned $2,388,000 of one-time general fund revenue, the town's total would be at 102.8% of budget. At year end, the library revenue totals $2,304,000. 99.8% of budget. The highway has recorded $5,566,000, 100.8% of budget. 100.6% of the sewer fund, or $4,103,000, has been verified. Stormwater drainage has received $764,000, 100.2% of its budgeted revenue. This concludes the preliminary 2018 year-end financial report as of February 28th. So this, the second report, the 2019 financial results for the town as of February 28th. Total expenses, actual as well as encumbered, are $7,210,000, 20.3% of budget which is higher than the 16.7% of the year that has elapsed. The breakdown is actual expenses, $4,709,000, and encumbrances, $2,501,000. Encumbrances are typically high early in the year as departments establish and commit to supplies, services, and commodities that they will need throughout the year. The general fund expenses are above budget, are above the 16.7% at 21.1% of budget, $4,446,000. The breakdown, actual expenses, $3,140,000. Encumbered expenses, $1,306,000. The annual energy cost of the general fund street lighting account is a component of the general fund encumbrances. Together, the expenses in the highway funds are $1,452,000, 25.3% of budget. That, again, is above the straight line uh, percent of the year that has elapsed of 16.7%. Driving the high cost in highway <laughs> are encumbrances for salt, gas, fuel, and equipment parts. Also, there is higher than budgeted snow removal overtime labor costs. Expenditures in the library are favorable to budget at 11.4%, $295,000. Sewer fund expenses are at 16.3% of budget. That equates to $667,000. Expenses in stormwater drainage are also at 16.3% of budget a total of $130,000. The general fund revenue received is $11,636,000, 55.6% of budget. By the end of February, the town had received the real estate tax in its entirety. For the general fund, that amount is $11,090,000. The pilot excuse me, the payment in lieu of tax received is approximately 53.9% of budget, $118,000. No other significant revenue is due at this time. As the supervisor mentioned, the town did re record $181,000 of unbudgeted street lighting audit revenue. There will be a partly offsetting expense of approximately $44,000, which represents 
24% of that refund. Regarding the entire town, $22.9 million or 65.2% of revenue and appropriated fund balance have been received to date. Approximately $17.2 million of the amount received is real estate tax. Again, this is the total amount due. At month end, the library had received 91.4% of its budgeted revenue, $2,358,000. Highway had received $4,027,000, 71% of uh, budget. Sewer has received 97% of its uh, budgeted uh, revenue, and drainage has received 97.9% of revenue. This concludes my report for the month of February 2019. Thank you, Annie. Any, any questions or comments on either the uh, third pass of the year end or the uh, current month's uh, financial report? Okay, with that, I'll take a motion to accept the financial report. Moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> financial report is accepted. Madam Clerk? Approval of minutes. February 12, 2019, the workshop meeting. Uh, motion to approve. Moved. And a second. Second. Questions, comments, revisions? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Me me minutes are approved. February 19th, 2019, the regular town board meeting. Motion to approve. Moved. And a second. Second. Any questions, comments, or revisions? Another masterpiece from Barb Janier. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Don't roll your eyes at me. The resolution is adopted. <laughs> <laughs> With that, we can now move on. I'm going to ask, as we s said in the beginning, Madam Clerk, please move on to uh, agenda item number 23 under Police Department. Item number 23, authorizing the promotion of a police officer to investigator in the Arundaquai Police Department. Uh, may I have a motion? Moved. And a second? Second. Thank you. Uh, Chief, uh, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. This is to fill a vacancy within the Criminal Investigations Unit. Uh, the individual that we are recommending for promotion here tonight is uh, Christopher Soprano. He's been a police officer with the Aronaquay Police Department since 2013 and has served in a variety of capacities, um, most notably as a road patrol officer, and uh, most recently now as an acting investigator. He's worked a number of high-profile investigations for our agency, has received very positive comments and reflections from his supervisors as well as members of the Munro County District Attorney's Office that had to prosecute those cases. In addition to his um, exceptional work ethic here, he has uh, a great deal of volunteer experience as he's worked with such uh, organizations as Camp Good Days and Special Times and Special Olympics and Shop with a Cop. <clears throat> he distinguished himself early in his career at the uh, academy where he was uh, awarded a, a leadership recognition for his class and as you probably note he is a highly decorated police officer with the Aronaquay Police Department and we're very pleased to move forward with this recommendation. Thank you Chief. Uh, any questions for the Chief on this uh, uh, recommended uh, promotion? With that I just want to say to uh, now soon to be Investigator Soprano um, it's been a pleasure to Watch you work. It's also a pleasure to serve with you on the basketball court and our winning efforts to defeat the East Aronaquay still, Teachers Association. But that up. <laughs> I will. Uh, I'll just say, uh, you know, the investigators unit is very important to us, and uh, we it was a goal of ours to be able to fill some vacancies, and uh, so this is a important uh, promotion for us because it, it fills a void that had occurred. So uh, the fact chief recommended you uh, certainly. Um, speaks to your capabilities, and uh, on behalf of the board, I'd just like to congratulate you. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Investigator Soprano, please stand up and wave to the cameras, as is custom. Thank you. And I suppose, Madam Clerk, we can now go back to number five. Item number five, authorizing the supervisor to enter into a contract with AVS, Inc. Motion. Moved. Second. second. Thank you. Uh, this would uh, authorize a contract with AVS, Inc. to assist with various um, uh, functions of the assessor's office, particularly with reg regards to uh, 
data management collection and helping uh, the assessor maintain her database of properties. We have worked with AVS uh, for many years, or at least the past several years, and uh, they work with uh, most neighboring municipalities. I have been very uh, happy with their performance. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number six, calling for a public hearing on the matter of granting a special use permit for 2991 Culver Road in the C Business District. Motion, please. Moved. And a second. second. Thank you. Ms. Ivers, explanation, please. Uh, thank you, Supervisor. This is um, a uh, motion that would grant or, excuse me, uh, set the public hearing date for next month um, associated with a special use permit to maintain a two-family um, structure. This was a... Um, a former single family building that had been converted some time ago and now in order to maintain um, the two family as presented in the application, a special use permit is required in the uh, C business district. So multifamily is permitted but needs a special use permit to, in order to do so. Thank you. Um, any questions or comments before we call the hearing? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Resolution is adopted. Item number seven, calling for a public hearing on a proposed local law to amend Town Code Chapter 235, Article 22, Regulation of Telecommunications. Uh, board members have in their packet a uh, proposed uh, local law amending our Chapter 235, Article 22, Relation to Regulation of Telecommunications. Uh, can I have a motion to uh, introduce that legislation? Moved. And a second? Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 All right, now to the uh, re resolution in chief. Uh, Ms. Ivers, explanation, please. Uh, thank you. The, um, the, the proposed revisions to this particular article and the zoning code are intended to bring the, um, our local code into compliance with the FCC order related to small cell um, telecommunications facilities. These are um, defined in the FCC order um, they're typically um, located. They're um, located a lot of times in public rights of way on existing utility poles, or in some cases, new. The the draft um, code amendments would bring the town into conformance with the federal requirements associated with these. Um, while we're in the process of updating the code to reflect and include small cell, we're also taking this opportunity to um, make some uh, changes or corrections to the review process associated with um, modifications to standard or already pre-existing standard telecommunication towers and facilities. So um, this is going to help make the streamline the review process bring the review and um, approvals with respect to small cell into conformance with the FF FCC order and um, just in general clean up um, a code that's been around for some time. Thanks, Ms. Iris. And as we saw uh, last, uh, last year uh, with uh, Verizon coming before the board for, for, uh, with application for, I believe, um, a dozen or so small cells, um, not only is it a redundant process under our current town code, um, it's one that um, with more coming, it speaks to the necessity of the board having to review every uh, application. And the FCC has made it very clear that this is a national interest. And um, I want to say they've circumvented or undercut local uh, authority, but um, certainly our ability to, um, uh, I don't want to say review, but to uh, put forth uh, restrictions on these uh, is becoming more and more limited. So we, I feel in uh, advancing this, it makes sense to provide more administrative review uh, under the uh, governance of the town board, but ultimately uh, with parameters for uh, administrative review. So I think this is a practical <laughs> way to deal with a, uh, a flood of incoming um, applications uh, for these uh, small cells, which I will add serve a, a very good interest in um, helping us uh, uh, enhance our Wi-Fi, getting up to, f excuse me, getting up to 5G uh, mobile capacity, which there is a, a national interest to do that. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number eight, authorizing the award of the 2019 Area Sewer Improvements, Washington and Beach Avenues. Table, please. And with that, Madam Clerk, we can uh, move on to the first of our two uh, held open public hearings.
Public hearing number 2, PH 2019-3 on the matter of rezoning 2763 and 2771 Culver Road from R6 to residential to mixed-use commercial. Okay, the uh, public hearing was held open from last month, uh, February. Um, this involves the proposed uh, rezoning of the aff aforementioned parcels uh, into uh, re R6 resident from R6 residential to mixed-use commercial. Uh, we had um, a handful of residents last month uh, uh, at the public hearing. I now offer the opportunity for other residents who wish to speak on this proposed public hearing. Hearing none, I'll take a motion to close public hearing. Moved. And a second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing is closed. <clears throat> Resolution 3A. Pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, compliance in the matter of rezoning application for 2763 and 2771 Culver Road from R6 residential to mixed use commercial. Can I have a motion? Moved. And a second. Second. Ms. Ira's explanation on secret, please. Uh, thank you, Supervisor. Um, the action before us, which is the um, map amendment and zoning change of these two parcels, is unlisted for the purposes of Seeker. Um, as we take a look at the um, analysis of potential environmental, environmental impacts, we consider the rezoning that's being requested for this particular um, proposed redevelopment of an existing building, but we also take a step further and look at potential impacts just under the if the parcels were rezoned in general. Um, and so as we take a look at part two um, and three, we identify potential impacts and we have to take a look um, and take a hard look to see whether or not there are any moderate to large impacts that cannot be mitigated. So in looking at a rezone, we typically focused, and in this case, continue to focus on potential impacts to land use and character. Um, in this particular rezoning application, it's associated with the redevelopment of an existing building and reuse of an existing building to convert into multifamily housing. Um, so both of those um, uh, aspects are actually uh, supported strongly in the comprehensive plan, um, expanding multifamily um, development um, opportunities was identified specifically, as well ex as expanding mixed-use development potential. And so this zoning um, changes in conformance with the comprehensive plan recommendations for future land use. Um, it's important to note that this particular location is on a major arterial, and that's one of the criteria as we look at multifamily development is um, sites that are served um, by transit, they're on major arterials, they're um, pedestrian access is readily available. So this um, particular area and parcels in question certainly check that those boxes. Um, the part three um, narrative describes that in a lot of detail. We also look at potential to impact. In this instance, it's a site that's pre previously developed. It's relatively small in size. So even under future redevelopment of the um, parcel, um, it limited in terms of what could be possibly cited there. It would be subject to site plan review. It should be noted this particular um, zoning classification is maybe one of the most restrictive in the town in terms of things that need, anything that could happen on this site would require planning board approval prior to it happening, including signage. So there's really not much that could happen in the future even, and even though at this point the, there is no Decades from now, um, there isn't much that could happen under this particular zoning uh, classification. Um, we looked at potential impacts to traffic. Um, the building reuse that's proposed is a um, conversion to nine apartment units. That's a very small generator from a traffic impact analysis. Monroe County DOT did not require a traffic impact study or even any data given the size of the project. And so we aren't um, confident that that won't be an impact um, here. With respect to utilities and community resources, the site is um, very well served given its location on a major roadway. Um, and the, the redevelopment of the site and use of the existing building will not create any impact that is, um, needs to be addressed. And so for these reasons, we recommend a negative declaration for the purposes of Seeker. Thank you, Ms. Ivers. Any questions uh, for Ms. Ivers? 
Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, resolution is adopted. Madam Clerk. Item number 2PH-3B, approving an application on the matter of rezoning 2763 and 2771 Culver Road from R6 residential to mixed-use commercial. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Uh, this resolution would uh, amend uh, town code to uh, permit, uh, change the zoning at 2763 and 2771 Culver Road to mixed-use commercial. A public hearing was held. Uh, on February 19th, 2019. Um, I want to thank the residents who came uh, in, in response to the public hearing. And uh, while th the concerns raised might not be directly related to this development, certainly any time residents uh, raise cons concerns about speed or pedestrian safety, we take them to heart. And uh, I know just today, uh, Chief, myself, and um, um, members of his command staff had a, uh, excuse me, Lieutenant Reed had a uh, meeting today specifically about pedestrian safety and some steps we can take moving forward to address that. So just want to let the folks who uh, came to the public hearing know it, it did not fall um, upon deaf ears and certainly we uh, take that to heart. But personally, in my opinion, I think this is a, a good reuse of a parcel. Um, it's an abandoned convent. Um, your options are somewhat limited under the current zoning. So I think this is a appropriate um, Rezoning for the property, as Ms. Ivers described, um, while there isn't a stated uh, use of the parcel, any any potential uh, reuse must go through a zoning board. So certainly um, there is an a, a acceptable amount of land use review uh, with any pr proposed uh, use. Any questions or comments? Oh, planning board, excuse me, not the planning board, the zoning board uh, would, would, would conduct a review of uh, any uh, other proposed um, uses. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Public hearing number 2PH 2019-4. On the matter of amending Article 2 and Article 6 of Chapter 222 of the Code of the Town of Arundaquite relating to speed limits. Um, this public hearing, again, was kept open uh, from last month, primarily because uh, there was an amendment to the proposed law made uh, by the chair um, adding one particular uh, road, um, that being Montane Park, to the proposed amendment to local law. Uh, board members were furnished with that uh, in advance uh, pursuant to town and state law um, of this meeting. At this time, I'd like to invite any um, members of the public who wish to come up to address the board on the, pro pro uh, the proposed revisions uh, to local code. Hearing none, I'll take a motion to close public hearing. Move. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing is closed. Madam Clerk. Item 2PH-4A, pursuant to the State Environmental Quality Review Act, with respect to traffic control measures for Briar Lane, Fairview Crescent, Farrell Terrace, Montane Park, Northwick Drive, and Sagamore Drive. Uh, motion. Move. And a second. Second. Ms. Ivers, explanation. Or Mr. Kiley? Who wants it? Both. Mr. Kiley. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, this uh, seeker determination uh, is an unlisted action as it will not involve any physical alterations to the environment. Uh, we will simply be placing signs uh, adjacent in the right of way. Thanks, Bob. Any uh, questions or comments? What type of action is this, uh, Mr. Kiley? Unlisted action. Thank you. Having seeker before us, any questions or comments for the commissioner? Hearing none, uh, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item 2PH-4B, authorizing the adoption of local law number 1 of 2019 to authorize traffic control measures for Briar Lane, Fairview Crescent, Farrell Terrace, Montane Park, Northwick Drive, and Sagamore Drive by amending section 222 or point 52 of the Code of the Town of Arundaquite. Um, may I have a motion? Motion. And a second? Second. Thank you. Um, this, would, uh, this would adopt local law number one as it relates to speed limits on town roads. Um, the genesis of this... Uh, uh, local law is twofold. A, uh, it was an unintended consequence of some very short roads, um, which required the speed limit to be posted at a at a speed off of some uh, primary roads. Uh, it would be posted at the 
new town speed limit that was adopted last year of 30 miles per hour. Uh, when a road is only a tenth of a mile long, the likelihood of you getting up to 30 miles per hour is low. So certain residents of these shorter roads petitioned us and asked them for a lower posted speed limit, and we felt 25 miles per hour was acceptable. We also, um, with regards to Montaigne Park and Sagamore Drive, um, upon adoption of the um, amendments the, to the town-wide speed limit along with some roads feeding schools. We also had some recommendations from residents um, uh, petitioning us, uh, uh, doing grassroots, grassroots work uh, to ask us to lower the speed limit on some of these uh, um, secondary town roads. And, um, you know, our general message to them is if there's uh, a demonstration of support from that street, uh, the town board will consider it and determine if it's in the best interest to uh, 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 pass the reduction. So we thank the residents uh, for their grassroots actions to make that possible. And, again, this uh, aligns with our dedication to um, pedestrian safety and also just in general slowing traffic down in, uh, in the town. Any questions or comments on this? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. The local law is passed. Please, Madam Clerk, we now go back to item for board action number nine. Item number nine, authorizing the lease of town property. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Mr. Kiley, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, the resolution before the town board this evening uh, authorizes the the supervisor to execute a contract to lease a parking lot on Pattonwood Avenue to uh, the United States government, uh, Customs and Border Patrol. Uh, we have leased a parking lot um, at 180 Pattonwood Drive, north side of Pattonwood, uh, to Customs and Border Patrol for many years. That lease expired at the end of 2018, and as such, uh, we have been working with um, the federal government on getting lease terms together. Uh, the result of that work is before the town board this evening to where we would execute a, uh, a contract, um, excuse me, a lease uh, of real property uh, with a term of uh, one year with five annual automatic renewals uh, for the amount of $22,000 per year. Uh, this would be subject to permissive referendum. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. <coughs> Item number 10, authorizing the supervisor to enter into a contract with sports officials of the Rochester area for Empire Services for town-sponsored recreational leagues at McAvoy Park. Motion. Moved. Second. Second. Ms. Hall, explanation, please. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Um, this resolution is to extend our current contract with Sora, which was for one year with the option to renew annually up to two years for umpiring services at our McAvoy Park location for many of our softball leagues. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 11, authorizing the supervisor to renew the intermunicipal agreement with Laurelton Fire Department. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Ms. Hall, explanation, please. Thank you. Yes, this intermunicipal agreement with Laurelton provides our summer camp staff with CPR training in exchange for field use at McAvoy Park, as well as usage at our Camp Eastman facilities, and we're looking to extend this contract. Thank you. And this was a, uh, initially um, signed, I believe, in 2015, and we thank Laurelton for continuing this partnership. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. <clears throat> Item number 12, authorizing the renewal of contract for purchase of various non-alcoholic beverages for the McAvoy Park Sports Complex. Motion. Moved. A second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Hall. Yes, thank you. This resolution is to um, extend our current contract with Wright Beverage, beverage which um, provides non-alcoholic beverages at McAvoy Park for concession sales. And we entered into this contract last year. It has the option to extend annually for up to two years, and we're looking to extend that contract. Thank you. And as noted in the uh, at workshop, this includes RC Cola, 7-Up, Sunkist, Snap 2.0 Spring Water, and A&W Root Beer, as well as Snapple. Uh, any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 13, authorizing the extension of the contract for layout, design, printing, and mailing of the Town Activity Guide publication. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Ms. Hall. 
Thank you. This contract with um, Penny Lane Printing, we would, we're looking to extend this contract through March of 2020 um, for our activity guide, which comes out three times a year. Thank you. And uh, as we noted at Workshop, it is a very good deal for 15,000 guides at a cost of um, really uh, dimes, if not nickels, per, uh, per issue. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is ad adopted. My math might have been a little off there, but it's a very good deal. <laughs> <laughs> Item number 14, authorizing the supervisor to enter into various contracts with independent contractors from local B90 for staffing of parking personnel, day overnight supervisors, ticket takers, and ticket sellers for McAvoy Park, Camp Eastman Sports Fields, and various town special events. Uh, motion. Moved. In a second. Second. It's a lengthy explanation, I believe, was self-explanatory. Does anyone have any questions on the resolution for Ms. Hall? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution <coughs> is adopted. Item number 15, authorizing the supervisor to enter into an agreement with Allen Associates to provide popcorn snacks at Arundaquite Senior Community Center programs. Motion. Moved. In a second. Second. Any, Ms. Call, explanation, please. Yes, this resolution is to... Um, enter into a service agreement with Allen Associates for the rental of a popcorn machine to be used at many our, of our family events that take place at the Senior and Community Center. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 16, authorizing a 2018 interfund transfer from the general fund to the library fund. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, as uh, Councilor Sealy said at the onset in her financial report for the uh, 2018 end of budget um, <coughs> year, uh, the library slightly overspent uh, on their budget. Um, the reason for that was identified um, actually as we developed our 2019 budget. It was an unintended consequence of adding staff hours um, for uh, uh, workforce development and training. Um, and not realizing that there would need to be substitute um, uh, employees, so that increased certain lines of the library's budget. Uh, the library board uh, did um, note this, however, uh, unfortunately too late. Um, and while uh, we generally don't like doing this, uh, uh, we do not want the library's uh, fund balance to get to a, uh, um, to diminish. Uh, it's at approximately right now 6.9% of the library fund. Generally, the recommendation is between 5 and 20%. If the transfer from the general fund was not made, it would go down to 5.8%, which is uh, really near the, uh, uh, the floor of that um, recommended level. Given, uh, as Ms. Seeley said in her um, onset of her financial report, our uh, revenue situation was good last year. Um, this came at a timely for the library uh, board, so we uh, I'm recommending that we have a general fund transfer uh, to make them uh, budget uh, uh, flat for the excuse me, but not budget negative for the the year, and thus not uh, requiring them to dip into their fund balance to close out their books. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed. Resolution is adopted. Item number seventeen, authorizing two thousand and eighteen interfund closing transfers to appropriate funding to the self insurance fund. Motion moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Um. Claim reserves, uh, which the next two resolutions uh, um, deal with, is the number of dollars um, necessary to pay the financial and um, legal obligations of the town as we're um, a self-insured employer. Each claim is assigned a reserve amount by our administrator, which is PMA. We budget annually for estimated expenses based on this amount. Um, at the end of the budget year, if actual expenses um, exceed the budgeted amount, we transfer funds from the town selfish insurance funds to cover those operating expenses. That's what this um, resolution does. However, I'll note in the second revolution, it um, actually uh, balances that out to an even greater degree. Um, the first resolution uh, recommends transferring $160,812 uh, to cover those expenses. Ms. Seeley, anything to add to that? Uh, no, I think that's everything. Okay. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 18, authorizing transfers from the self-insurance fund to operating funds for workers' compensation claims paid in 2018. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Um, so I noted we transferred uh, 
$106,000 plus dollars to cover the expenses. However, um, other accounts, uh, the expenses were less than budgeted. Um, uh, thus, we can transfer those back into the self-insurance funds for those purposes. That amount is approximately $175,000. So for the year, we uh, ended up about $14,000 favorable in our projections for our workers' compensation. So uh, the balance of these two resolutions is a, a good thing. Um, it's tough to explain, but uh, overall and good result. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 19, authorizing a series of balanced appropriation transfers within several funds of the 2018 operating budget. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Comptroller Seeley, explanation, please. This resolution seeks approval to transfer budgets from or appropriations from departments where we have excess budgets to from departments or group expenses where we have excess budgets to departments or groups where we have overrun the budget. All budgets must have a corresponding appropriation and that's what this resolution is seeking approval. We have balanced each of the funds uh, identifying the departments that are over budget and identifying where funds are available that can be transferred. And, and each of these are balanced as we discussed in the workshop. Yeah, and so this is a, a lengthy attachment to the resolution, but as uh, Annie said at workshop explained, um, if we aren't able to transfer within the, in the fund, we have to often go to revenue, which we did not have to do um, in, in if we weren't able to uh, make the budget whole, the budget line whole through revenue, we have to go to fund balance, which we didn't have to do either. So all in all, a lot of uh, transfers, but ultimately a very good in the fact that revenue was uh, budget positive last year. So we were able to, actually the, the, our spending was under budget, which really was what allows us to not have to dip into revenue. So kudos to our uh, town staff and department heads for um, spending under budget last year. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Right. Opposed? <coughs> Resolution is adopted. Item number 20, authorizing the supervisor to enter into a capital lease financing agreement with M&T Bank for two articulated wheel loaders, sidewalk plows with attachments for the Bureau of Public Works. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Ms. Seeley, explanation, please. Oh. Oh. No, it's okay. I'm oh, sorry. <laughs> this uh, resolution was actually... Uh, produced by our attorney and basically we are seeking approval for the supervisor to enter into a capital lease financing agreement with MNT for two articulated wheel loaders just like the title of the resolution. Uh, there, there was a resolution to actually do uh, to proceed with financing with MNT and this resolution is to gain approval for you to sign the agreements. Thank you. As the board's accustomed, whenever we do capital leases, it's a two-step process, one of which awards the bid to the lowest uh, qualified bidder for the lease financing, and the subsequent one is uh, the um, authorizing the supervisor to sign the lease. This is the second one of those. <coughs> Questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 21, authorizing the appro approval of educational expenses. Motion. Moved. In a second. Second. Uh, Chief, explanation, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. If you don't mind, I'll combine the two as far as the explanation. So we have two uh, police officers, members of the Irenikoi Police Department, Lieutenant James Reed and Sergeant Andrew Whitaker, who have requested the ability to uh, attend uh, Utica College in the uh, field of cybersecurity. Uh, certainly, we value the fact that they're seeking higher education. Uh, one of the cornerstones of the President's Task Force on 21st Century Policing was a better educated, better trained, and better informed police agency. And we're certainly doing that with uh, moving forward with this resolution. It does fall within the, the uh, parameters of the collective bargaining agreement. So we certainly support uh, this proposal, and we congratulate them for uh, seeking um, this educational opportunity. Thank you, and uh, this first resolution would authorize uh, tuition reimbursement of 80% to Lieutenant James Reed at Utica College's online cybersecurity uh, degree program. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? The resolution is adopted.
Item number 22, authorizing the approval of educational expenses. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, this uh, resolution would authorize 80% reimbursement of tuition to uh, Sergeant Andrew Whitaker upon completion of Utica College's online cybersecurity Bachelor of Science degree program. Um, as Chief explained, it is pursuant to the uh, town's collective bargaining agreement with our uh, police uh, nightstick club. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 24, authorizing the lease of five Chevrolet Impala passenger vehicles to be used by the Arundaquai Police Department. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Chief, explanation, please. Oh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The resolution is to be able to uh, purchase, or I should say lease, five uh, Chevy Impalas to be used by the administrative and the investigative staff of the Arundaquai Police Department. Uh, this request would replace our current um, vehicle situation. Uh, the lease process works very well for us. We stay well under the mileage allocated, and it doesn't require all of the enhanced equipment that a police fleet, a typical police fleet, police fleet vehicle would require. Uh, this was put out per general municipal law and town code as far as a bid request. The most responsible bidder was Hazleton Leasing uh, Company, and we're recommending... Uh, passage of this and it is within our 2019 budget allocation. Thank you. Any questions or comments for Chief on the proposed resolution? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 25, authorizing attendance to the 2019 New York Tactical Officers Association Patrol Tactics Conference. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Chief, you want to take up the next two at once? Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. So, Patrol Tactics uh, Conference, we're recommending that Officer Dean Kay and Officer Kelly Kreiser attend this training in uh, Verona, New York. It's an exceptional opportunity for our officers to learn tactical clearing uh, practices associated with structures, structures and other areas that they might be in close confinement with. One of the things is that these two officers will then have the ability to take these best practices that uh, they will participate in at this exceptional training and then bring that back to our patrol officers and conduct roll, talk, roll call training for all of the members of the Arunaquay Police Department. For the second resolution associated with the uh, tactical conference, um, we're recommending that uh, Officer Justin Jagoda attend this conference. He's a senior member of the emergency response team. And one of the things or several of the items that be discussed during this will be dignitary uh, protection, uh, leadership principles, tactical first aid, and the debriefing of several critical incidents that unfortunately have occurred but provide us with a lessons learned perspective to all of this. And once again, Officer Jagoda will be expected to come back to conduct roll call training for our personnel. Thank you. Uh, as Chief mentioned, the first resolution uh, authorizes Officers Kay and Kreiser to attend the tactics conference. Uh, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 26, authorizing attendance to the 2019 New York Tactical Officers Association Tactical Conference. Motion. Moved. And a second. second. Thank you. Uh, this uh, second resolution, as was explained by Chief, is uh, necessary to have two resolutions as Officer Jacoda will be attending the tactical conference for, I believe, one less day than the other two officers. Is that correct? That's correct. As sir. such, we have uh, separate resolutions. This would authorize Officer Justin Jacoda to Jacoda to attend the uh, conference. Questions, comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Item number 27, authorizing the supervisor to enter into an agreement for a town senior exposition. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. As I mentioned in my remarks, uh, the... Um, Third annual uh, senior exposition will be held April 17, 2019, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. at Bishop Kearney High School. Any questions or comments? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolutions adopted. Item number 28, approving the special event license for the 17th annual Sunset House 5K Race and Fitness Walk. Uh, motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. Uh, this would uh, approve the uh, 17th annual Sunset House 5K Run and Fitness Walk, Saturday, May 25th, uh, beginning at 9 a.m. with assembly on Cooper Road between Chase Bank and the Evans McGraw Learning Center. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 
Aye. Aye. Opposed? The resolution is adopted. Item number 29, approving the special event license for the Heritage Hero 5K and Mile Stroll. Motion. Moved. And a second. Second. Thank you. This would uh, authorize the Heritage Hero 5K Mile Stroll and Roll to be held on Saturday, September 7th, 2019, beginning at 8 a.m. at Seabreeze Amusement Park upon the condition that all effective residents have been notified. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Resolution is adopted. Uh, this concludes our body of work for uh, tonight's regular town board meeting. The next workshop meeting will be held Tuesday, April 9th, here in the Broderick Meeting Room at Town Hall, starting at 4 p.m. Our next regularly scheduled town board meeting will be held Tuesday, April 16th, 2019, 7 p.m., here at the Town Hall Broderick Room. Any questions? Uh, I will now take a motion to adjourn. Ooh. And a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. We hope you enjoyed this presentation of the Arundelcoit Town Board on ICAT, Government Access. presentation of the Arundelcoit Town Board on ICAT, Government Access.